doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. Rock and rolling. Stretch money is we in good. the building, man. How are you doing today, bro? What's up, dog? We in just like that? Yeah. What's up with We're you, bro? We're chilling, man. I'm doing good, man. You had your friend Valid on here, uh, called, I think a month ago, and then we had him yeah. about less than a year ago as well. You guys released yeah. the tape. Yeah. Talk I about- watch. I watched both of those interviews, of course. Did you um, enjoy them, man? Actually, yes. Cool. Um, I can appreciate how well spoken you are, and the fact that you actually do uh i don't want to say you do your job but <laughs> you do your fucking job i appreciate that yeah. <laughs> you know yeah so, i mean yeah. i was a high school dropout man so this is not bad get out of here i was yeah i was an honor roll student really how about that damn you've yeah. done pretty good for yourself <laughs> <laughs> uh interesting that we both find ourselves in hip-hop interesting that we yeah. both find ourselves in the rap uh to some degree man uh, do you think school has any part to d- delegate in creatives and where they go do you think school is like a restriction for creatives do you think that they can ha- it can help creatives to some degree uh particular schools and programs can um i wasn't um I didn't have the luxury of going to a great school or great schools. Um, I was just raised right, you know. So I, I, I don't really, I have to credit my good grades to my own intelligence and the fact that I wanted it. Um, not, not so much so to the schools or anybody else (laughs) i mean my parents they enforced uh learning um you know i've always had a lust for learning so um but yeah uh i would probably say particular schools and programs do and then with having a child of my own um i've grown to learn that that's kind of some bullshit too it's kind of hard to read you know like what's good and what ain't it all sound good at first until you in motion with these facilities you know what i mean like um my daughter's in a real good school right now but the work is more intense for her so her grades did a little teeter-totter for a minute you know so it's been a getting her back on track thing but that ain't got shit to do with the question no no that's interesting i pop it though (laughs) <laughs> no, it's an interesting yeah. perspective on you it, know. right, man? It's about the individual, right? I'm a parent going yeah. through it, living through it, like many of us. Um, and I've, uh, me and her mom have had some real hoops and hurdles in the last few years with her schooling. Like, I got a whole story to tell about that shit. Yeah, yeah it's been a trip. <laughs> You're breaking down the story, or is that just like a hypothetical? I mean, I can. It's just a lot. I mean, like. Uh, as far as uh, fundamentally learning, I feel like um, uh, the black schools, um, <sighs> this this finna be fucked up, but this is real. Um, I had her in the Winans Academy. I feel like they're playing school in there in a sense of just uh, playing the roles and the positions. You got to motherfucker in there talking about he a dean and you know uh my daughter got bullied all year uh (laughs) uh i had i went to the school all year round i walk in it was like lean on me and that bitch it was elementary pencils flying fights screaming teachers don't got no control over the kids it's more like a daycare than a school Uh, I would imagine it might have been a little wilder than a daycare. Damn. It was it was crazy f- for me to see, like, yo, y'all don't have no control over what these kids doing in here. So, um, and that and that was a, a a black school, like black staff through and through. Yeah. Um, you know. Um well uh I believe it was a charter. It was a few years ago now, uh, yeah. But it was uh, like I said, it was the Winers Academy. Yeah. So you pulled um, her out. You're like, this is done with. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad she up out of that bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think anybody has ever watched? I mean, you 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 have a pretty substantial fan base. When you talk, people tune in, right? Do you think all of your fans have watched all of your interviews? 
Do you think like a majority of them watch your interviews? It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um I I I I'm I'm a mathematical motherfucker, so it's like I would like to think maybe ten or fifteen percent wow. has. Damn. You know. Um and in the last few years with all the like uh uh, controversy around me, my name, and and buzzing from different ways, but um, I think that people have uh, more have rushed to see what the fuck been going on. Right, because you know? if you're popping yeah. off early two thousands, right, you're making yeah. a huge name for yeah. yourself, yeah. and then you know it's a reemergence again, but mm-hmm. now more on a controversial side. You're still dropping songs though. You're still making music. Fuck yeah. You're getting more on the creative end. You're getting more on the hip hop side of things, mm-hmm. um, and then your name kind of re sparks up again. It is interesting to see that. Yeah. Um, well, the the thing about it is, it's always new to new people. Yeah. And it's been this way since I've been home from prison. I've been home from prison, like, going on seven years now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, for us, it kind of be like, you ain't got the motherfucking drift yet. Don't come my way with no bullshit. (laughs) So, um. You were, like, from 2014 to 2017, right? Yep. And so you missed, like, a little gap there of the shift of Detroit music and I missed the shift. Yeah. Like I was I was a uh, I was a uh, uh, I think the term they would like to use is high haters um when the um you know I was around for the uh team east side well the doughboys and then the team east side and like that era uh and watching that phase watching the rush the run which was incredible um uh, for both I remember it like like almost like yesterday yeah. um i was I, I saw that um before prison i was already on this kick of i wanted to express myself in a more boom bap uh form of fashion and i did an album with nick speed yep um in that time um, my fan base in the streets and my fan base, which were in the streets, um, they was like, no, like they wasn't with it. But that wasn't my intention. It wasn't for them. Um, I wanted to raise eyebrows in the hip hop community and be recognized. And I was sick of being a hip hop shit in the bullfrogs and shit like that and having hit the block with it. And you know what I mean? So, and, and all my buddies from uh, the Mo Dirties, the Marv Ones, et cetera, um, and so many others. Um, I hate naming names, and niggas be like, why you ain't say my name? <laughs> <laughs> but um, And you pick Nick Speed, which is insane, right? Yeah. Like, that's the person. And if you're going to pick anybody to do that style and really take that approach, you go with Nick Speed. I felt like, yeah, like, I mean, you know, it's, uh, shout out to everybody else who get busy in that lane, but you know. Um, I've been blessed um, my whole career, dog, to uh, have worked with the best the city's had to offer. Yeah. Um, some of the best, not everybody. And you've watched every generation kind of throughout time, right? Except With exception for maybe, uh, I mean, during uh, Sham's days, I'm sure, how much were you paying attention when you Sham was I watched Sham run. I paid for tickets to his uh, Christmas concert that he did when the uh, first album. I remember all that. How old were you when that happened? Um, shit, I, I when the fuck was. Were you young? Were you were you like young? Were you like a teenager? Well, that's the thing, bro. Motherfuckers be trying to call me old and like, bro. I, I was, can't tell how old you are. I like, yeah, guess. like, yeah, like <laughs> I was nineteen, twenty when this shit happened for me. Like when it took off, like okay. I was barely old enough to get in the bar, mm. <laughs> and like. You know, um, yes, it's been almost two decades. So but you, you've watched every generation then pretty pretty much of Detroit music evolve yeah. from the nineties. We're talking about Detroit's Actually, most wanted. Yeah, yeah, I, because I grew up to Eshan yeah. and shit like that. Uh my uncles that's all they played is underground shit. Wow. So yeah, I have been watching. And then you get up to a rock bottom, street lords. Absolutely. Then we get up to uh middle school, high school. Yeah, Doughboys, yep. Team East Side. Yep. Yeah. T Grizzly, and then right when you get out, T Grizzly breaks KDZ. up. KDZ. Yep. 
I got it. I like to throw my nigga in there. Like I don't yeah. know why niggas don't be saying my nigga name. <laughs> For sure, you and know people forget too. Tone Tone, like one of the people that really set it off. Yeah, we'll never forget Tone Tone. That's you know? a bad motherfucker. So just so many generations, you got to experience everything. You get to watch it. You got to be a part of it. You were inside of it. Yeah. Every single, every single level of it, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? actually, yeah, man. Um, mm. Because I was just in the mix and like my run lasted as far as take money to make money is concerned like my run lasted clear into like from 06 to 11. yeah so the tape drops and just like, off that but i i drop uh, i've been dropping more than that the whole time right. which is something i definitely want to talk about tonight so, <laughs> um just so for for the new viewers for people who are watching you for the first time hearing maybe some people who haven't heard about you yet they are hearing about right. you just walk through your just growing up and just growing up in Detroit a little bit man just walk people through your life before we get into the music music hmm. um well uh, where do I start um uh I'm from the east side of Detroit um I'm from East Warren let's be clear about that um my mother uh, was a working lady, and my father was a street nigga, a real street nigga. Uh, there's some street niggas still in existence today that know my daddy and know who my daddy was. Um, I was groomed by my father. I had him in the most important years. Um, I still grieve over the fact that I didn't have him in my teenage years when I needed him the most. But he was there in the early years, and I still uh, do shit today the way my daddy taught me. Mm. Um, my daddy, uh, he died a couple years ago, um, and that shit didn't end. Our relationship wasn't the way a father and son relationship should be at uh, a father's passing, you know, um, but... You guys weren't seeing eye to eye at the end? Nope, nope, nope. I just had a problem with a lot of his ways, and he didn't give a fuck and just felt like I, it wasn't my motherfucking business to give a fuck of, or judge him, and, and he my daddy. He older than me, and he run shit. That's just how he was. He was hard body, and I'm just like him. So it's nigga, no nigga, you wrong, and there you go. So, um, I hate that that happened. However, uh, that's uh today. Um, I was an honor roll student all through school, elementary, middle school, high school. Um, my daddy always told me he wanted me to know he showed me everything that he did in the streets and he always would tell me that he wanted me to know the streets and the books because if i knew school and what school had to offer and i knew the streets then no nigga out here would be able to fuck with me mm. and um that's something i still live by and it stuck with me today yeah um so I believed in my daddy growing up. He was he was my hero. He was everything. Niggas was looking to Michael Jordan and shit like that. And my daddy was, I felt like he was the baddest motherfucker on earth. You know what I mean? Freshest motherfucker. You feel me? I mean, you know, I mean, he sells dope. So he dresses like he does, you know? He changed clothes three times a day, you know? Um, yeah, I was the little boy with the, with the fade, with the tail in the back, with the rhinestone baseball jacket, going to school and shit. What um, was his level of like acknowledgement from the city as far as like that? Was it was it was he know like did people know or was he kind of um, undercover? I'm not gonna sit in here and say his notoriety was like uh such and such daddy or big meech or some shit like that. But on the east side, my daddy his reputation. Uh, if you check for him, it is to be respected. Mac and B. Wick, all up through there, even even in his later years. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like you niggas know my daddy, and they know they know I'm motherfucking little Darren. And and you know, for somebody to admire their father at that level, you know, I was watching a, a I was watching a seminar one time, and this guy, mm. uh, the guy 
doing the seminar said, everybody in the audience, if you have a good connection with your father and if you love your father, raise your hand. Mm. And out of 100 people, only like three people raise their hands. That's crazy. And uh, it means something for somebody to really have a connection and really love their father, right, at the end of the day. And the fact that he was probably respected by so many people mm. showed that he had some type of personality or something about oh, him. Oh, he was cold. He was yeah. cold. He was funny. He was strong. Yeah. You know, um, he had charisma, style. You know, he talked more shit than a little bit. People love shit talkers. Yeah. You know, um, and he was a hustler, a real hustler. Yeah. You know, if I ever seen one, I saw it in my daddy. I ain't have to look nowhere else for that shit. Talk about um, you're growing up, you're watching, you're learning, you're looking, learning the books, and you're learning the streets. Um, how does that get you to the point of music? Well, likely from the day I was born, I've been a music baby. Mm. Um, I grew up in a... a, a, a very music orientated household uh every household that i was in um and, and what i mean is like um i didn't grow up in a house where my daddy played the instrument uh, instrument or some shit like that or was into music but we loved music my mom and my daddy loved music and one thing they didn't do was prohibit me from what i seen and heard they ain't give a fuck or about no filter for real. I mean, they, you know, they had a filter, dick and pussy, you know, oh uh, no, or you know, don't, you know, they was, they was good parents. But when it came to music, they let me explore and they made me see my parents. They explained shit to me and made me understand early on, like, you know, this is this. This means this, right and wrong, right and left. You know what I mean? So, um, like, and I, and I get to a little deeper part of that, like with my old dude. But um, I grew up in a music house, man, my, from like, you know, my mama wake up in the morning, cleaning up, making breakfast, playing DJ Quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my daddy was too short heavy. Uh, when it come to the rap side, West Coast heavy in my house. From too short to quick to 40. You feel me? And then my own exploring came from that. But it, it dates far back than that um, because I just wanted to understand hip hop. So I went and grabbed that Run DMC tape mm. and put that on. I went back to the beginning. So, like, um, I've been studying music a long time. And like like I said, with my mom and my dad, it was a music house. With my grandma Vicky, rest in peace, that was a music house. She loved music. We be jamming. She was another lady cleaning up Murphy oil soap, wiping shit down, and amazing Frankie Beverly playing, which is how when Helly made Take Money to Make Money and played it for me and I knew what it was, he was like, that's you. And I knew what it was because of my grandma Vicky. Because that's how I knew Maze and Frankie Beverly from being at the free concerts at Hart Plaza every summer. Mm. You feel me? Damn. Like, yeah, seeing seeing Maze and Frankie before his, way before his voice went out, when he used to do that shit for real. So you were soaking <laughs> up all this, like, just legendary, different varieties of music. Absolutely, dog. And then, yeah. it just, and then you figured out how to get that into your system and out through your voice. One thing I can't accredit to my parents, my grandparents, my uncles, because um, my, cause my, my Detroit underground knowledge and history comes from my uncles. And my uncle Des playing Esham and City G, Mercenary Killers, and every underground nigga you can think he played, that's all he played. He hustled in the streets and he played Detroit shit all day long. So, um, yeah, I credit knowing soul to my grandparents. Um, you know, hip hop and like my mom is the reason why I know B-52's Mesopotamia. You know, like why I know uh, some of the most bizarre shit you wouldn't even think that I know about. Like, so, um, 
yeah, it's been a musical journey my whole path. And then it was just me that just took it on. I knew early on that I wanted to, like, see and rock him. Mm. Like, what do you mean seeing him? Like, just watching his career, right? Watching, right. seeing the videos okay. on Channel 41, The Box. Yeah. You remember that? Barton Cable, box, you hit? I remember Rakeem. I mean. Okay, so look. Back in the day, we had this we had this cable here called Barton Cable. Uh and 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 it was a box, a big gray box that had the buttons on that you could walk up and press the dial and put the like press the you know what channel you wanted up on the box. And it had a channel on there, 41 which was called The Box. Yeah. And that's what the videos used to come on. Damn. Check that shit out. I think people used to talk to me about that. They used to call in and just request you yep. pay a dollar or some yep. shit like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You people call, used... request, pay. Yeah. 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 Shit was wet. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> shit was wet. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so seeing Rakim, bro, like, made me, like, want to become an MC for real I think I think I knew then early on like five years old like yo yeah. I want to like yo I don't know what this is but I love this and the little boy was in the video beating the boxes up with the bat man you know so yeah rock him when you get to that point of realizing um you found inspiration you figured out what people are doing with their musical styles now you want to enter the game um what was the first steps that you took um, well, when I met, when I met Crane and he wanted to bring me to Hot Lava Records. Is that in Michigan? Yeah. Independent. Okay. He was independent. We were independent. Um, I just, I just knew how to like rap. I just had like hella bars. Yeah. Um, I didn't have songs that I wrote. And he was like, yo, go study somebody, like, go study a few of your favorite niggas and see how they write songs so you can start writing songs. And um, I studied, um, I always studied Snoop. I went back to Snoop. And I, um, at the time, T.I. Trap Music was out. I studied T.I. Trap Music, and that's how I learned how to write songs, dog. What year was that? The T.I. song. Um, what was T.I. trap music? Oh, four? Oh, oh, four, so oh, five. So T.I. is one of your inspirations at that time? Like, to actually... It's a, it's a crazy thing. I've never <laughs> I've never really been on a proper platform to say it out loud. Like, you know, like, nobody knows that shit. Not go, even him, huh? Everybody at home is going to be like, what the fuck, T.I.? What the fuck? Oh, three. Oh, three? Okay, cool. So that was one of my favorite albums. And I went back and listened to it. You know, Rubber Band Man, all that shit was on there. And uh, I studied Snoop and T.I., and that's how I learned how to write songs. Yeah. And then I wrote Take Money to Make Money. Yeah. And that, so that drops a couple of years after? Or did you just look back at their time? What, so you're 2006 when you dropped that song, right? Yeah, I recorded it in 2005, of course. Okay, so you recorded yeah. it in five and then released it in six. Yeah. Right, and so... And it probably was late 2006 2007 when it like took off how many years of practice did you have or how many studio hours did you have before that song released um not many uh before that i had only uh i had only recorded it was all like new yeah man. i was just rapping um like <sighs> like i was rapping for the homies and shit like on the block and at school, like I rapped in high school, like seeing me become stretch money and do take money to make money wasn't so much of a surprise to the people that knew me already. Was it was it? just more like, damn, he really doing it. Like, yeah. Did you have a different name before stretch money? It wasn't like the uh, day or something like that. No, no. Uh, my name is Darren. Darren, yeah. I've been little Darren. And D Mac. So you but it was so it was never a rap name, it was just what people were. No, to I didn't have a rap name. Oh, okay, cool. Like rest in peace, my nigga Loke. Loke used to be like, I'ma bring Lil Darren, I'ma bring D Mac through this bitch. He gonna <laughs> fuck all y'all up. You feel me? And he was talking about me back then. And I didn't have a rap name or I hadn't created the moniker Stretch Money yet. What made you uh, think of stretch money? Being broke. 
the name ain't got nothing to do with no money. It never did. It had to do with not having no money. And I said, when I get some money, I want that shit to stretch long. Long as train smoke. So I said, oh, stretch money. That's kind of sweet. I was like, yeah, I got a first and a last name on they ass. Stretch money. I called my mans. He like, <laughs> yeah, I like that. And then we was like, yeah, we roll with like all my projects have a money phrase or a theme. And there it go. Imagine. You know what I mean? Like, and that's it. Take like, Yo, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was Sorry. gonna say so. When so then when take money and make money comes out, you yeah. at that time, um, it didn't it didn't go crazy right away, right? It took time uh, before it built up, and then finally people got word of it. Yeah, it took it took it took some time. Um, you know, a year back then, you know, the process and the grind was different. It wasn't no real social media. I think we had MySpace back then. Um, were you pushing your music, like marketing it, or was it? Because uh, I know at that time, payola wasn't as easy as it is now. It wasn't as easy to just go pay for spins or pay for a DJ to play your shit. Was pe were people picking it up and going like, "Yo, we need to start. We need to put the shit out here." No. Mm. I would like to tell you that people were calling as far as like like the DJs. We was we was um. You know, we we were mingling and building relationships with any and all of them, anyone that we could, you know, just bringing positivity, um, you know, just trying to, you know, let them see what we had going on. We had meetings, you know, we, we followed proper protocol. Um, what do you mean by that, proper protocol? You know, like we, we, we booked a meeting with FM 98 and crane fed them we had a meeting he fed them lunch we had our press kit all of that music whatever we needed to present we had it there with us to present and this is what we're trying to do can you help us that type of meeting and conversation we did that and we uh we were able to build relationships with all of those people uh, stemming from doing things like that. What is the radio station's intent at that time versus an artist? What are they trying to? What, what do they get out of it? Is it just because okay, we're we're the first one to break this hot record? I, well, uh, that that because I mean, you know, what, what do they get out of it? Um, so breaking the record is like top tier, you know, on the top of their list and probably of respect. Um, but I, I remember it feeling like, okay, so, like, I remember the energy feeling like, okay, so if we help y'all, we play this record, like, well, what are y'all, what are, what else are y'all going to do? Are y'all taking this out of town? Are you going to get this record spent in other markets? Like, I remember that being a thing in conversation, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So... Um, however, the, 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 the truth and the fact of the matter is, man, despite like all the effort, um, people were calling the radio mm. and requesting and wanting to hear the song organically. Yeah. Like not cause we like had promo and telling people to go do it and had our cousins doing it and calling and blowing the radio. Natural people had heard the record probably in the streets played at the bar somewhere and they would call and would try to sing it like i don't know what his name is i just know it'd be like it take money to make money and the, and, the, and and then you know of course if they not playing it they like well they gotta go get that motherfucker so that's what happened bro people was calling and they had to go they're like oh we know who that is we got it oh shit let's put it on bam and then it Cool. So people yeah. were fucking with it so much that they pressed the radio stations to play it pretty yep. much. Even though you guys had had a conversation prior, and that wasn't what really made it happen. It was more so people forcing it, the forcing yeah. it, which is pretty damn cool. That's the way it's supposed to be. Demand, yeah, right? It was real. Yeah, like it, it was real. There's got to be a demand for Shout the music. Shout out to everybody. Um, it was a lot of love, a lot of help, um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of um, um, people, and behind 
you in a lot of different ways just you know for every person that mm. you know we handed 10 20 cds to or some t-shirts or promo or that wore a shirt for us yeah. or you know like it was a lot that went into that shit and a lot of a lot of love genuine love from real people yeah. and it just happened organically now, you know this is is this like a little bit at the same time doughboys and Timmy Sutter are coming out or are they already kind of no nah, you know them? I was well before that like I was well before that like me KDZ and Tone Tone had a full run where it would almost like it was just us three for a minute right like as far as like running around and consistency and working you know and um and that's no shade to nobody else who was doing it but that shit was publicized about me, KDZ, and Tone Tone. I remember it being in the Michigan Chronicle, the Three Kings, mm -hmm. and it was like, damn, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so... Um, what was it like to have that at that time when you're in Detroit and you're in Michigan? What's that start and feel like? Is the Are the vibes something people can replicate to this day? Can you feel those same type of things? Or was the energy different back then? Uh, the energy... Well, the difference between now and then is we were in the middle of it like that was a big rush and a craze that happened and um you know um it was it was in a time where you know you got to think bro like it's been so many artists but like before me like it was still only a handful of people that had really like run had a boom and like you know you get this new young youthful guy with this song that's universal for everybody it was it was it was just a rush and then you know also with the streets me being in the streets we were in the streets the street orientation and my music like that and that's another thing to bring up bro like and to just to answer your question the energy was different then because it was happening you saw me you saw us you felt it it was evident you I ain't that's that's another thing, bro. I ain't never been no shit talking money, flashing money, I got money. I never made it about that. I always just been a dope ass artist. We had money. Like and people kinda like be like <laughs> calling me all kind of shit and oh he fell off and all that and like really man. I've been trying to be a dope MC and an artist this whole time, and it never was about that bullshit. Like right. I said, Stretch Money, the name came from being broke. Yeah, you I mean, know? sometimes, I mean, I look through a lot of YouTube comments, um, and I look through a lot of people talk about you, and some people will see, I, I don't see a lot of people say one hit wonder. I see people say, like, one album that just broke everything, like, just destroyed everybody, and, and that's what it is more than just one song, you know what I mean? That's what that's what it is, and that's what I was going to bring up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad you got back to that, because, um, you know, you have people who've shaded, and, you know, you can try to, oh, he only had one song, and but that's not the truth. The truth is, when you got my album, it likely changed your fucking life. Mm -hmm. Um, I represent it for every young nigga and even the elders that was really in the streets hustling. And we, at that time, I represented the energy and the feeling at that time exactly. And that's what gained the hearts of my people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the thing. Like, it wasn't just that one song when you got the album. Like, right now, today, bro, um, I'm not going to even bother putting a number on the percentage of, but I am partially the influence of the generation today who rap, mm. for sure. For sure. Um, I don't have to say that arrogantly. Uh, people... They've always taken me as that. Um, but I guess that's what happened when you say the shit yourself and not let everybody else say it. <laughs> and now when you're talking about generation, are you talking about just Michigan music or are you talking about the industry? Uh, no, not the industry. I've been influential in there too. Um, but um, Detroit. Okay. Detroit. Detroit as a whole. Um, I have, I've had countless artists approach me 
and tell me um, what my album meant to them and what it did. And, like, it's the reason why it's <laughs> half these niggas want to rap or want it to rap. Well, you know, a lot of people do come on the podcast and they do mention you. I mean, they don't. Yeah. When it comes up to the people that were very influential in Detroit raps industry, you know, it's it comes down to Street Lords, Rock Bottom, Doughboys Cash Out, you, uh, you know, Team East Side, yeah. uh, Dex Osama. Like, there's all these different types of people that incorporated mm-hmm. all these different types of sounds, tone tone, and everybody. Like, you do get mentioned a lot. I, yeah. I mean, I've had I, 360 people on here. Like, I hear your, I probably heard your name about 30 times on the conversation. Which is, up. which is was was crazy to me. Like, whether positive or negative, what people, what what I learned many years ago is that like. It's all wood for the same fire. So I've learned how to use that shit. Mm. I didn't mean to be controversial. <laughs> when were you controversial? I mean, I just, I've had situations with uh several motherfuckers over the years. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there there's issues <laughs> Not that, that I want to talk about. We know we don't have to talk yeah. about it, but I mean, in particular, like, yeah, I mean, obviously the most recent thing is because, Al, you know, we had Al Nuke on here, which was an interesting conversation. Because yeah, was, isn't it? Yeah, he was saying he was trying to gift you a beat from Zaytoven, and then you said that he was trying to charge you for it, which made him look bad because it made it look like he was sneaking a Zaytoven beat to you. Oh. So he was like, undercutting Zaytoven. That's the whole premise of why he felt offended. Oh. That's what he said. I'm just saying. I mean, I don't want this to be one of those fucking Adam No Jumper ass podcasts. No, like, I oh, mean, you, you know, me, you know, come on now, it man. Is what he like, said, you bro. know, you know, you know, we sync that shit. You feel it me? It was on my couch. Um, you know, uh, he can have that. That's his recollection. He can have that. I have mine. Uh, you know, and there the fuck it go. That's it. I don't got nothing else to say about that shit. That sure. shit really was just all that shit been petty. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, I always do wonder when these things happen. You know, you're you're doing a tape run. He's mm. doing promotion for his film and all the other things. Like, you do wonder if sometimes it's like, man, this is a good opportunity to talk about something we both have a problem with each other. But I'm not saying you core horse it, but, like, it makes you think a little bit more like, man, You want to know the funny thing about shit like that? Yeah. Is I'm so, I'm that much of a mastermind that I would prefer to do it that way. Okay. Than to fucking be having a problem with a motherfucker for real and it's turning into some other shit. Um, I would love to be like, hey, nigga, let's put it together and make it whoop de whoop whoop whoop, you know. And but I mean, I'm a villain in real life, so but it'll never go. I like mean, that, I've been. I, guess, I mean, I don't know. know if you know my history in the rap game, but I've been involved in it for a long ass time. Not that long, but a long mm. ass time. And I've been behind some pretty major figures at certain points. And I do remember certain situations that were just straight up bullshit marketing schemes. Okay. Yeah. I remember it happening, and then I remember everything dying off right after the tapes release and all that shit. So it's clear air. Nobody's hoods are shooting up nobody's hoods or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. But what you're saying is this wasn't chorus. This was literally just out of nowhere, out of the blue. Absolutely. And you're just having to deal with the backlash of it. Unfortunately, absolutely, because that shit, like, even with that situation, it's not like, not like that shit happened now. That shit happened a great many years ago now. And it's coming back because people have things to promote and whatnot. Exactly, man. Thank you. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. Yeah, you feel me? I mean, nobody's just gonna like, call somebody like it. It's crazy. Like, I had to learn the internet. Then I had to learn that the shit was fake. I had to learn in social media. It's just. Um, entertainment and it's funny that I just seen Vez up here and y'all had a conversation about well he spoke on the fact that this shit is WWE and I've been saying that this shit is WWF for years now cause I've been peeped it it's why I turned my hair green and and and, and, and rode in the uh, 107 on a dolly yeah. that stretchable lector you know what I'm saying like people try to like brilliant shun the shit that I uh like they it's like to be to be brutally fucking honest um after take money to make money man it's um it's like people just kind of like it's like nobody was inter- interested in what I was doing after that but it's not that they weren't here's the thing 
a lot of effort and paper got put in to take money to make money, a lot of money, quarter million dollar type shit, you feel me, to make that work. And back then, this you wasn't no doing it with no measly 30, 40,000. You really had to have it. So with Take Money to Make Money, the single, the song, the process, um, the album um, in its entirety, um, it was a lot of money spent to make that happen and be in everybody's face like that. It wasn't a street corner you couldn't go on or turn. If you ain't see me, you saw a poster, sticker on the wall. You saw my face from east to west. We flooded this bitch, marketing like you ain't never seen. You know what I'm saying? Um, on top of the music being good. Yeah. So, um, but we really had it and we was blessed to have it. My niggas, we was hustling. My niggas was hustling. We really had it, man. And um, that shit was a blessing to have that push and that press behind me. And that's what it was. So all the efforts after that didn't have that money. So it wasn't taken the same way. Well, doesn't it, usually what happens is like two things. One, you get super, super funded because people are buying your shit and then you mm. go on tour and now you're selling so much that you're yeah. able to fund your next tape or a label picks you up. Or yep. somebody picks you up and signs you, basically. That's yep. like your two major options, right? Yep. So you did have an opportunity to get signed uh, eventually after that, right? Yep. Never got signed, though. You had the opportunity. Had, had conversations. Okay, right. Didn't have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Had conversations. And that's all it was as far as I know. Uh, uh, walk in the room, had a conversation, walk out, never heard. Like having a job interview and you don't hear from them no more. Yeah. I've been to Universal, Atlantic, Def Jam. I remember Shy Money XL uh, watching my video, listening to my shit, and then looking at me and <laughs> saying, <laughs> I'm not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn. And I was like, all right, well, that was like the first. I, I knew the blows was coming, but like I was like, all right, that's the first one. That, that was heavy. Nigga blew my shit out with that. Do you yeah. feel like at any point um, that it's something to do with the music just not being broad enough for people to purchase or become fans of? Or do you feel like something else was limiting your factor and progression to become bigger and bigger? Um, my whole crew went to prison. Right. That's part of my story that, Eric, that like nobody really knows for real. Like... um. My CEO, President Crane, uh, he went to prison. Um, my management, Kenny Wood, he went to prison. Um, our silent partner went to prison. Yeah. Um, so then me, and uh, ultimately in the end, I was the last to go, um, all with separate cases it's not like we uh got indicted and we all went down or no shit like that but it was just all separate situations and that pretty much was the crumble Damn. right there and um that's something that i don't talk about or have yet to really express and um yeah bro my whole camp went to prison and then me in the end and that was the end of that um, when you when you talk about progression, um, losing my CEO right out the gate, like when the stretch money shit took off and got hot, like he was around for a minute and then it's like a season he had to go. injury in like basketball, just the season. Yeah, like he that. had to, and you know, I hated that for him too, mm. that he didn't get to see all of it and feel it. And when he came back, we was picking the pieces back up. And then, like I said, it was a boom, boom, boom. So we all was just trying to figure, pick it back up. And I tried to keep, I kept the name alive. I I fought hard, but we had to figure it out. And like I said, I was the last to go. And um, that changed everything. So the CEO out, um, unfortunately, they're, everybody's locked away. You have to run everything by yourself at this point. Yeah. Okay, and so it's not easy to do that, obviously, especially when you and built it like, with the people. Business wise, right? I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, um, in the sense of like handling shit the way 
I just, I just, I just handle shit and carry myself the same way my big dog, I felt like he would have. So I carried our name and my name and company with integrity until they was back. It has to be super difficult to do. And this is kind of a little bit pretty. And I had the help of Kenny Wood, though, and Bino, too. Yeah. Like, Kenny was there. Like, Kenny, Kenny, that's my nigga. Like, Kenny was there. We rode. We made a lot of money together. And we really, we really, really did this shit. We ran this shit the fuck down. Did uh, Take Money to Make Money profit in the end? Like, did it? Did the whole thing, pro- did everything you do? I mean, it profited from junk. But I'm saying, like, past the investment of the two. I got a royalty check the other day. That's good. I'm saying, though, like, two, the 250 at that time, like, it, it pretty much, that wasn't a problem anymore. Um, Well, I can't really say that, man. You know, this music shit don't, don't pay you back what you what you have to spend to make this shit happen. Right. It's it's lopsided when it come to that. Um Okay. And it's finally to this day it's it's easy enough to where you can do this shit and spend minimum and kinda make yourself somebody and catch a buzz. But well, definitely not um, I wish yeah. that I could say that that much money was recouped, but I can't say. Right, because it's like a movie, right? Like if a producer investor invests into a movie they were going to want to see triple to quadruple yeah. the return. Yeah, so yeah. When, when that doesn't like, happen, they don't really give a damn about the music. They're almost like, we got to see what the hell you brought yeah, us back. Yeah, we got to recoup it all yeah. in every way that we can. Right. And, and so, who, who can be mad if somebody want their money back, that type of money? Right. Talk about, um, you know, track releases. You guys are making your money. You're doing your thing. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, at the same time, your people are getting locked up. And now it comes to the point where you're getting locked up, mm-hmm. so you can't even really push forward. Now this is this is enough time to go through Doughboy's cash out yeah. and Team East side. Now you're really witnessing this shit happen, yeah. and now you're yeah. saying that um, part of the style and things that are happening in Detroit mm-hmm. are coming from you or stemming from you. Do you feel like Doughboy's and Team East side had any any bit of your sound or influence? Um, no, no, no. I, I I would never say that. Um, um, what I mean is influence. Influence, right? Influence. Inspiration, okay. Motivation, uh, ain't nobody went and uh went and rap like me or sounded like me. I I kind of can't really be mimicked on the rap side. Um, I've taken pride in being good at that fucking part this whole time. What do you think you 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 did that was so different that like helped the inspiration of it? Did you facilitate in a different way? Were you communicating? Were you promoting yourself in a different way? Um, yeah, absolutely. But I think. Um, in that time, it was like, yo, young dog can really rap. That was the thing. It was like, yo, this shit is sweet, but he can really rap. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you had to get up and go to Chantonique's and buy a CD. You know what I mean? And, and like, it was the craze was so hard about my shit. Like, people done bought my CD three and four times, and that CD was twenty one ninety nine. Goddamn. <laughs> Talk yeah. about um. So you're watching Detroit's one of its biggest impacts, which obviously just this past weekend, Timmy side Doughboys on stage together, watching that happen mm-hmm. and the collaboration of that. Um, Historical. Right, and you getting to watch them from the early stages before and after mm-hmm. and now um so just let's gloss on that real quick just talk about that like man listen man when i saw that stadium packed i was like oh my god like mm-hmm. this is is i in that moment i said okay we live in the dream that was the dream that is the dream. That was the dream, bro. That was, that was, that was, that was E's dream. Eshan. That was Wine, Blade, the Lords. Wow. That was wiping them dream. Malik, Tax, Tough. That was all of our dream, bro. To make to pack an arena. Like that's the. That's the we made it like moment, uh, like us we did it. You feel me? So, um, when I saw that, I was just like, "Damn!" 
Do you think even they knew how big Detroit want, like how much Detroit wanted that? Like, do you think they knew? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Um, yeah. you know, with um, with with uh, you know, sometimes, you know, cats can be young and just like living in the moment and not just aware of all the significance of what they are, right, mm-hmm. at that time. Uh, now, so unfortunately, you're like water, dog. What's that? Yeah, I need water. Uh, yeah. What's that? The wide? Yeah, the wide's good. I don't. Why it's fine. Um, what we just leave off on? We were just talking about the Doughboys coming back and doing the. Uh, oh, we was talking about the historical moment. Oh, uh, yeah. At at uh, the arena. Yeah, for sure. And you were you at the arena when it happened? No, no. Oh, I had my own gig to do. Actually, we had somewhere to go that night. For real? Uh, so I had to go do that. For sure, man. Um, but um, I definitely was looking forward to seeing it successful. Yeah. No. You oh. know, like, I hate the, you know, like, the all it take is one slip of bold energy to make motherfuckers be into it. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really want to see them boys pull it off, and I'm glad they did. Um, it, it don't matter who does it, man. That shit was just really good. Yeah. Like, the people, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the people in attendance, you know, the artists coming together. Man, you know, like motherfucking Gilly and Wallow up there, Meek Mills and all them. Like, this shit is really big now. And, like, that shit is remarkable. So, like I said, I was looking at that shit like, damn, that's the, that was, that's been the dream the whole time yeah, to pull that off. Now witnessing it, uh, the whole city, man, um, it just feels like the music scene clicking, even the sports teams clicking, everything clicking, it could be a ginormous summer. Like, if everything just clicks, if the Lions win the Super Bowl and if Detroit's vibes and energy just keeps yeah. pushing like that, man, yeah. who knows, the spotlight. Somebody said something interesting. They, I mean, I know this is kind of fucked up to say, but they said before the show, they said, if nobody fucks up tonight, Doughboys, Team East Side, right. Audience, people in the audience, people yeah. participate. Anybody participate? If nobody fucks up tonight, this could prove that we can do this shit. I forgot who yeah. said that on live. Yeah. Like, and we can prove that we're done. Like, that's all that scrappy yeah. rah rah shit is over with. Yeah. And yeah. big names watch, right? Big names are watching the city. Big names are watching the artists. Big names are watching how people are moving, right? And they're done with that shit, kind of. Like, they and don't... and we actually got the rock though. We actually got the rock. What does that mean? Are you talking about Rock Nation? Uh, no, I mean like, oh, the ball. <laughs> the, yeah, the the city. Uh, you know the uh, the prominent artists, Doug and them, from Vez to side of the Ray. Or like, we have the Rock. They got that bitch. Yeah. Like you know, um, we looking all around the country and the cats in other cities and states. If they not rapping in that Detroit or like um like Rio the Flint way like the with that cadence if they not doing the cadence that's uh reminiscent of us they they want the beats that sound like Detroit beats and that's happening state to state now even like in places like Cali I think somebody so, just put Lil. I don't know if this is a real thing that happened, but Lil Wayne was putting like on a Detroit beat. That's crazy. Yeah, I just heard <laughs> it on Detroit Rap Daily. Are you watch follow Detroit? Are you watching yeah, these, I do. Uh, these I platforms? Do. I do. You got I Detroit do. Rap Daily, Hip Hop Lab, Detroit Rap News, Forum yeah. Magazine, and all these places. Yeah. They're just really promoting the scene. Yeah. And the only reason that they're able to do this, the only reason we're able to have so many platforms, or Detroit's able to have so many platforms, mm. is because there's so much content, which is a good thing, right? Well, yeah, you put it that way. It, well, yeah, it is. It's been that way for a minute. Um, it's definitely a shitload of content. And but the thing is about like Detroit, like even with everything that's going on now, before this, we always had our own ecosystem of this is Detroit. This is how was how we do it. This is our sound. This is the way. This is we've always had that. Like. Even before now, it's kind of always been that way. Really? Yeah. People make it seem like the infrastructure really started to build once the first day out came out. And then, like, the, because the spotlight really shined on Detroit, that 
there was more money coming through, more artists were coming through, more connections were being made, more networking was happening. I can, yeah, we can, we can credit T for that and Helly for that, absolutely. But denying, like, this ecosystem of ours that's been existing for many years, it was already like it ain't, bro. Be legit and forty in them been coming to the city, fucking with. Uh, the street lords and them and shit like that and like such and such been coming to the city and been hip to the sauce I forget. and leaving with the sauce. I forget and who said it, but somebody came on and said that the times were different because there wasn't much money compared to what it is now. So like you're kind of comparing, like for instance, Little Baby's one of the, Little Baby's one of the biggest artists in the world, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Comparing mm -hmm. that to somebody like E40 or just comparing that to somebody like even Jeezy at some at the time that he was coming right. across. Is that the same relevance? Like, can you say that that's the same type of power or the same type of networking where an outside artist is coming inside to make money and work together? Mm. It's different now. Mm. It's different. And, and, and uh, given uh, first day out and teeing them the credit, on that like that's a valid point for sure uh it made a difference it made it made it more uh it opened that floodgate in a more welcoming way like hell yeah you know people want to like want to be a part of what's hot right because like so. you had your song you had try me with Dej loaf right mm -hmm. you had these songs that really um couldn't make a lot of Again, facilitation and a lot of spotlight on the city, but were they as powerful as first day out is the question. Like, was that was that the big breaker? Was that the one that really, really yeah. put Detroit on the light? Or do you think that was just another try me? Do you think it was another take money to no, make money? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Nobody like, could say that <laughs> about that fucking So record. was it the big, do you think it was the biggest as far as what broke open the Detroit sound for for the world pretty much? Yes. Yeah. I'll give it that. Yeah. Absolutely. I can agree to that um, wholeheartedly. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yes. So when you're coming back in 2017, you're watching it right when it happens pretty much. It's yeah. about the same damn time exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and now when you're seeing this reemergence of Detroit, mm -hmm. the spotlight's on you, what is your plan of attack? Like how do you plan on maneuvering? Or did you wanna, do you want to kind of skim people through – your time away or is that something well it's funny that you asked my plan of attack yeah. at the time i wanted to i wanted to cater to the detroit sound and get back in it get back in the hustle and bustle with them and the homies and do it like that and i got told not to by who uh my ceo no nah, you don't gotta do that you don't gotta <laughs> do that sound and do whoop, whoop and do and so I didn't, and I just did me like I always do. And um, I feel like, yeah, I wish that I just would have did what I, I knew because I saw the vision and I saw the energy. And, I, and I've been good at studying the game this whole time. Like, I've been studying music my whole life. So I can see the shifts coming. So I saw the energy shifting and, and what this shit was turning into, and I, and I knew it. <clears throat> um, but in a sense, I was hindered. <clears throat> you just took advice? That didn't work out yeah, to your that favor. Yeah, it did work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just took some crappy advice. Okay, so re let's let's go back to that moment. Uh, what did you do versus what you wish you did? Uh, well, I don't have any regrets. Not um, regrets, but more so just like if you look back at it, like you said, you were given advice and that you had a different idea. So yeah. let's go I back. Dro to I dropped the classic album though when I came mm -hmm. out. Um, it just didn't get. Um, well, I can't say what it didn't get. Um, I think that the old ways of pushing and promoting were over and it was this new the wave, internet and social media and, and I think that that was a shift for uh, us as a company and um, that probably the 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 change in the dynamic of how things were rolling out here had a lot to do with whether my buzz took off or it didn't right i feel like um i released a record called salute um where i pretty much saluted and shouted out a lot of people the city as a whole um it got a lot of notoriety 
and um it got a good look um personally i didn't like the production on the record myself but uh that was that was my plan of attack right to 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 gain some buzz and stretch money's back you know some good lyricism shouting out all the niggas in the streets the homies who was doing their thing since i've been gone and um i guess maybe in a sense uh wrap my way back into the to the mix yeah and um that really didn't work neither so <laughs> yeah i mean it happens right that yeah. time away can sometimes be a blessing but sometimes it can be a huge huge handicap yeah everything was different everything had changed i literally bro i ain't gonna i ain't gonna front i damn near like i had to take like a year off and just like figure out and study what was going on and get an understanding of how like oh this this new form of entertainment is working i don't understand it yeah you feel me like yeah like even if you could even to this day you could still sit here and say you know what i really don't get this shit i don't get why i posted uh <laughs> i posted uh this uh fight of these kids beating their mama boyfriend up they really wasn't harmed they wasn't hurting them though it went around it was viral but i posted that shit and it did 3.9 million views on my page right but nothing else does and i didn't post it to how the fuck was i supposed to know that that video was gonna do 3.9 million right make me understand that social media is the way that the algorithm works it pretty much uh pushes anything that gets watched time for over 15 seconds and so mm. then it like spreads it out over spreads the reels, yeah, through the reel section, and then the reel section goes globally, not just locally. So if you don't hit the global reel, mm. then you're most likely staying a pretty damn local or medium local. Mm -hmm. Um, and music is the hardest thing to push through that. That's why people yeah. are doing the snippets and everything like that. Yeah, it's like a different Boy, time. You gotta be doing some outrageous shit. Yeah, like in a sense for like, it gotta be something to it that. Catches. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of some new emerge. Like, you know, yeah. One Up T is one guy who came up with there was no bullshit behind his explosion. I'm not sure mm. if you're familiar with him. He's mm. one of the artists that came out with there was no bullshit behind his explosion, just straight up because he's super talented and, mm. you know, he found a way to market himself properly. You know what I'm saying? That's one cat that really did that. I think Cash Kid Mark figured it out. Like, yeah, I like Cash Kid. You know what I'm saying? There's, there are some kids who, cats who have figured it out where it's like no bullshit behind it. You didn't have to get shot, you didn't have to go to jail. You didn't have to do any raw raw stuff. You don't have to start a beef. You literally just made baller ass music and made it. In 2019, I released, well, re-released Rebel Nation, and that's that's uh, me and my partner's label. Mm -hmm. um, we released Locked In. Um, uh, I had the likes of uh, Cash Kid, uh, Danny Always Winning. Mm. Shout out to my nigga Danny. Um, Foto, twin, uh, Buddy Montana, Sada Baby. Uh, who else was on there? Uh, Vez. I had Vez. I, I got a record on there uh, called Coney Island with KDZ and yeah. Vezo. Yeah. Uh, some smoke. Um, countless features that I did purposely. You know what I mean? The project was called Locked In. Um, in 2020, I, I did, uh, I dropped, I'm the best rapper in Detroit and that started a lot of shit, <laughs> but the motherfuckers, the real niggas <laughs> and the MCs, like the, the, the people who got it, they got it. It's not, this is not a diss. This is not like saying I'm better than you or like in a sense of the term and the slogan, yes, it's saying that, but that's not what this is about. Right. This is about me feeling myself and being confident and talking my shit. This ain't about hoeing nobody. This is just simply I got the balls to say it and I could fucking prove it though. Like nobody could tell me that I'm not fucking raw at fucking rapping nobody no. here could tell me that shit. it's just a different time though right like yeah. as good as you can be at rap it's yeah. more about the popularity nowadays it's definitely a popularity race and i've never ran the race my whole life so it's kind of like i'm cool on yeah. the popularity race like i get it and like if i wanted to cut that switch on and do it 
I could do it. But I ain't never been that way. Well, it started, right? Like, what's been happening recently with mm-hmm. all the controversy and everything mm-hmm. is bringing your name back to spot. And because Absolutely. you have so much of your... you, The only reason that it's holding up is because of your work, because of your portfolio, because of everything you've already accomplished. If you were just randomly out of nowhere coming up with a rap career and starting something with somebody else and starting somebody with something else, nobody would yeah. give a fuck. But because you yeah. have so much longevity and history, it stands. Yeah. It holds water, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you are able to trend again. You are able to come back, even though if it's not something that you might yeah. find interesting to you, it's still working, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, positive or negative, good or bad, it's all wood for the same fire, and this shit is entertainment. All it takes now is that, I mean, you know, you and Valid came out with the tape together, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it was received more from hip hop heads than it was from you know absolutely street rappers. that was the intent yeah. yeah but um the great thing that uh we've uh enjoyed from that project is is the acceptance and how we've been received from the streets and people in the streets and like actually. Like, yo, this shit is really dope. This is, yo, I like this. Right. Because it's actually some cool-ass music. Right. So. You guys had a showcase where you guys had street-minded rappers and you've had hip-hop heads in the same place all bobbing their hat, right? Yes. 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 So it's showing that it's working. Yes. Yes, man. People are appreciating the collaboration. And yeah, man, me and my bro, man, we just humbly set out to do some cool shit, man. We didn't. You know, we had intent and in behind everything we done from, you know, our like we really planned it and worked it to the T. Yeah. And we stuck to our guns the whole way through. That's the cool thing about when you make hip hop. Yeah. Like when you stick to hip hop, hip hop. Yeah. That the hip hop heads appreciate it and they actually like they rank it in their own system in its own way Absolutely. you can really be implemented in it and it's so cool with rap it feels like everything can get so lost like you don't know where it's getting pre- received from you yeah. don't know why it's getting received is it getting received because I'm a yeah. legendary or is yeah. it because I'm a popular as fuck right now yeah. with hip hop you can't do that with hip hop it's literally like how how fucking fire was this tape because it, of the lyricism because it of the sticks beat or it doesn't exactly yeah um, and we the significance is there right like you know like right now i'm riding a a wolf bruiser wolf so and i'm like yo that shit bruiser shit bruiser tape uh wolf tape is a classic like it's classic um um we've bill and isaiah has been deemed a classic in detroit hip-hop history Hmm. Absolutely, it's stitched in the fabric. We in there, like, um, like technically speaking, there. Um, you haven't seen a duo. Um, I mean, it's only it's only been a couple. You know, I mean, um, you know, we've had like you know um, the homies, uh, Slum Village. You know, guys like uh, Clear Soul Forces, and you know. Um, you know, various other artists, but um, I would like to say myself that Bill and Isaiah made a great impact yeah. on the Detroit hip-hop community. Well, it was something needed, right? It's like something needed where it's like, let's let's mix this up together. Let's get these two yeah. sounds and styles. And then you're, you're kind of going more towards the hip-hop side. And because your name's so strong, you're able to showcase it to people. A lot of people are afraid to do what you did. Yeah. Would you step, into, step out of rap for yeah. a second and step into hip-hop real quick? Let alone, you know, like, take the risk of, like, the whole thing with me and Valid is, like, how did this happen? Like, <laughs> you know, black and white. Uh, two different styles, two different sides of town, almost shouldn't even know each other. You know what I mean? Like, um, um, I got more of a street orientation, um, an element, an origin from where I'm from and, and what I've done, and he's completely hip-hop. You're right. You know? So the clash, but I knew that all that was going to make for... Uh, a, just a great mixture right you know what i mean and 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 uh when we came together it was i was like yo we we could make we could go boom bap 
and like make some diehard rap shit and like rap rap and like yo we could try to kick ass on every song or we could have some really good fun and make some good music and like make some jams and that was the road that I felt like uh I decided that we should take. That's what we did, and it really fucking worked. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I listened to the tape. It was legendary. I like the music video too. I like how you guys really made it a theme, and you guys really stuck to what the tape is. Like yeah. you didn't. You, it wasn't just some bullshit, random music video. You guys it wasn't actually just like a, a random idea, and yeah. we called it that. No, it's it is that through and through. We are Bill and Isaiah. Yeah, it's legendary. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we can keep seeing that blow. I up like how blow. you said that. That's how we say it. It's legendary. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's needed, bro. There's this kids yeah. called the stoop. And we are, you know, the thing with the Bill and Isaiah shit, you know, it was it was back to back. It was two rings. Mm -hmm. So if like we're not gonna we 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 could actually like keep it going, but we gonna actually follow the story and then we just gonna stay together. Um, and we're going to deliver more uh, concept-driven projects in uh -huh. the future. That's all. Have you been getting... I noticed uh, Valid was on Shade uh, Shade 45 recently. Where you, did you have the opportunity to get on with him when he was on there? Yeah, we smoked that bitch together. Yeah, yeah. You ain't see it? No, I seen. I just seen him for some reason. Man, what? Yeah, I didn't see you in the video for yeah, some reason. Yeah, what, what, what you see, him in the jersey? Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. If, you seen, if you saw him in the Piston jersey, that was Bill and Isaiah at Shade 45. Yeah, I don't know why the clip just looked like it was Well, him. when he was rapping and him uh, talking or rapping, like the camera was on him and then it would pan And then it focused on yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, okay, you that's... know, yeah, but uh, shout out to Shade 45. Yeah. And um, they really looked out. Uh, Valid put that together. We went up there. We showed out Pistons versus the Knicks. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um it was it was great. It was an experience, and we really fucking got off. That's like Eminem's radio station, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, where, is that in New York? Yep. Yeah, that's wild. It's wild, man. That's so weird. Shady Forty Five is in New York. It's like the I know craziest concept. I know, right? Is that because like where hip hop kind of originated? Area like that's probably part of the reason to it. Yeah, so it's kind of like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean that's interesting. Yeah, like to I would be sick to have it here, but like I'm obviously you can't. Like it's not yeah, enough. I don't. Yeah. Not, even if he yeah. Had, even if he had it here, it would have had to be downtown the same way it is there. Cause ain't it what in Manhattan? Did you ever get? Do you um? Do you appreciate Eminem's newer work and everything like that, or do you appreciate uh what's like his whole legacy as far as everything? I love Eminem. Yeah. I love Eminem, man. Respect him and them. Um, I don't know him. I never met him. Mm. Um, he's uh, he's uh, magnificent, man. He's been great. Uh, it's been it's been so great to have him, dog. Like I felt that way when when he when he dropped Eight Mile. I was like, yo, <laughs> that's it. Like yeah, like you know, like bro, like he. Like he really did it. He did something that um uh glorified uh a part of our culture. You know what I'm saying? That eight mile was us. Like it was it didn't represent like the streets or whatever the fuck, but it was us. It still was a part of home, um, the heritage, the culture, how we came up uh on that side of shit rapping. Um like to see that to embody that shit man i i feel like that was crazy that i feel like eight mile was like prince making purple rain hmm. that's what i feel like it was it was it was just as significant so when you ask me about m i respect that man i look up to that man man that motherfucker cold-blooded yeah, yeah and i love everything he do people i i hear people like they don't like the new m and they say shit or whatever, but I believe in riding with artists and MCs on their entire journey. Yeah, it's interesting to watch somebody progress, sounds change, yeah. style change, yeah. knowing how their personal life is affecting their music. Um, I think it became, obviously I was a huge fan of him growing up, and then uh, the newer tapes, I, I didn't understand them as much, but I, you know what's crazy? When the tapes came out, like when Kamikaze and stuff and Relapse mm -hmm. and all that, all that stuff was coming out, 
when you first listen to it, you're like, some some people are like, what the fuck? Who is this? Like, this doesn't sound like yeah. the guy I grew up to. But then, like, four years later, like, what the fuck? This was cold as fuck. Like, this is actual lyricism. It's like, and, and, you know, he came out with a statement saying he's just trying to be the best lyricist ever. Like, he's just trying to be the top lyricist. You have to, you have to understand that and what mm. he means when he says that. And, like, if you, if you were MC, you know, that's like a magician trying to get to the highest level of his of, of of magic right like what can i what can i pull off and he has the same hunger that he had 20 years ago right that's the when if it when you can say that i just want to be the best he's still reaching we like that ain't the what what happened that ain't the old or the last Eminem or man I want some of the old Eminem but really what's happening is he's trying to continue to elevate and reach heights that he hasn't reached before right so that's just something you know that's the last thing I did I'm trying to do more than that this time or I'm trying to do what I didn't do last time you have to understand that with people and they artists and I do get that the only argument I would have to to it to some degree is that it's almost like a guitarist an electric guitarist Mm -hmm. and he's trying to play everything in the world but you forget that you have to make music too. Like you forget that you actually have to I make sounds and 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 connect with people on a certain level. But hold on though. Was he hired to make music for everybody else? Nah. Exactly. That's a good point, man. He's doing it for himself at this point, right? Exactly. Like yeah. well, who said who said he was fucking hired? to make music to accommodate the way you want to hear it, him, me, and him, and him too. Good point. That's fucking crazy. Well, that's where the balance comes in life, where you take an artist and you take an entertainer, and then you go, okay, let's get spiritual with it. Like in the reality sides, he can live his life however the hell he wants to live his life. But then when it comes to an artist, it's like, oh, well, artist has a certain obligation because of these reasons. These so it's always a balancing act between like what the fans and audience appreciate versus what the individual artist is putting out there. The same battle, bro. Listen, bro. (laughs) Like we can elaborate on this shit. Like, even with me, and I want to get back on Eminem, yeah. but, like, even with me, like, I haven't conformed to the Detroit sound, and that's why I'm not a part of the popularity race or the bunch or or the my, my buzz is not at an all-time high because I, like, it's fucked up. Like, it really feels like... Um, I'm not a, I, I'm people fail to accept me uh, as the artist that I am and they really just want me to be this street nigga and rap on over them street beats in that one song and it's like what's your approach to that though when you hear that when you feel that way like do you feel like you just go outside and you I just do I just do everything and that's hard I just make I just make all the feelings that I feel I I hear some Detroit sound and shit with that one song I rap on that shit if I like it. If it's crack, I'm I'm on it. I I'm I'm on it. Um Yeah, you feel me? I got uh and that's another thing, bro. I've been co-producing my last 5 6 projects. Like I really been hands-on with the production. I wasn't taking credit for it, but uh cuz I like my people to get they shine. Um, but Eastside Lord is out now, produced by Getty, my nigga Mike from Michigan on there. But I've been hands on with that shit and how it sounds, and I really wanted to adapt uh, the new Detroit, uh, the new Detroit sound. Uh, not and you know it's not one particular sound; it's many different feelings. But I want to give my people that feeling and cater to the now. Well, you gotta look at like Skilla Baby, right? Yeah, you gotta look at somebody that. Did the Detroit sound? Mm-hmm. Took it to a hip hop level, and then took it to the mainstream. Like to the, I mean, somewhat to the mainstream. I feel what you're saying. Like I mean, like you know, like man, you got shit with like 14 million views on it. That's fucking mainstream. Right. Like, and he's yeah. doing tours with you know Travis Scott and stuff like yeah. that. So it's like you're kind of hitting that level where you're almost on the you know, mainstream, mainstream. Yeah. But I think he's smart because maybe he thought to himself like, all right, bro, we can dominate the Detroit scene all we want. Mm-hmm. We already did it. Mm-hmm. Or if we're not gonna do it, then we gotta take it outside of Detroit because I can't just be stuck here mm-hmm. trying to make a living. I gotta take it 
to the furthest length. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're trying to do that? I mean, you made the hip hop tape, so it's proven that you're trying to get further than just yeah. Detroit with that yeah. alone. Uh, bro, you know this is a money conversation, bro. You know that that man uh, getting that uh, countrywide exposure uh, like that got records. a lot to do with that. Yeah, right. Versus him sitting at home and like, man, I'm about to take this shit to the motherfucking world. <laughs> <laughs> Three million dollars, you know, right? Yeah, three million is like, a lot to work yeah, with. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, that's you a know, different, you're right. That's a good yeah, conversation. You feel me? So, okay, well, what about Baby Tron? Like, Baby Tron was a good example of a lyricist. Baby Tron's come up has been sensational, dog. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Because I ain't expect it. You know, like, you know, um, I get called older. I just been around a long time. And, like, you know, I really like seeing his uh, rise to power has been a real trip to see that shit been out cold and he has he has his own thing that he does yeah. like and that's the thing I'm always man I got respect for any this is see like once I start looking at the game like like X-Men like we all mutants I start seeing this shit different and it's like he has his thing like you know Cyclops be like <laughs> blow some shit up. Wolverine got the animantium. Cut you the fuck up. We all different. You feel me? Or, you know, doggy bone swing nunchucks and I like to swing a sword. Cut a nigga arm off. You know what I'm saying? So, um, once I started looking at the game like that, I really started enjoying everybody for how different that they were. Especially when the artist is different. Wow. You know what I mean? That was really beautifully put, bro. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. That was kind of some <laughs> profound ass shit. <laughs> well, yeah, man, and that's another thing about <laughs> me, fuck? man. Like, you know, like, motherfuckers don't know. Like, you know, I can cut the ignorance switch on, but really, man, I'm really uh, highly intelligent and very well-spoken. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I really just like to kick it. Nah, that was cool as fuck to hear that. You're yeah. right. Everybody has their own niche and their own way yeah. of finding their own success, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can't look at the next man and be like, well, we're not doing it like that. We got to do it like that. So far, as far as you right now, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, you followed your, your CEO's blueprint. Didn't, you know, you wish you kind of, you know, it didn't go out the way you want. Now you're doing it. Now you're focusing on hip hop. But what's like the next big thing for you as far as how you want to put yourself out there? Are you still focused on Detroit or like what are you focused on right now? Oh, no, I've, I've been stopped playing the Detroit game. Mm. I've been over that uh, many years ago. Um, I'm in the I'm in the art of hustling and building my own cult following. Uh, what's next for me is continuing to build my cult following because that's what this business is. Um, mm. I'm not looking to. Why should I be trying to get in the business if I am the business? Right. I'm a I'm a fucking business myself. You know what I mean? Like um, I just need other people to answer the phone for me (laughs) you know what i'm saying to get booked for this to get booked for this verse to do this and to do that like for real for real like i really just you know and and that's the thing like with rebel nation we have a we are a fully functioning label we don't outsource anything except videos we do everything ourselves um, when you're saying phone calls and whatnot, are you do you feel blackballed at all? Do you feel like there's gates that have been closed? Do you feel like there's phone calls you just can't make even though you should have the access um, to the calls? Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say like I've been enlisted like as blackballed. Um, mm-hmm. There was a time where I felt like that and I actually said that shit out loud. Um, and the way I felt was sanctioned. It was warranted because it was real. Um, I felt cold shoulders where I went and, uh, I'm, I'm old enough to understand and wise enough to know that it really wasn't technically a black ball. It was just, re- uh, relationships that people had with people that, um, had, uh, felt a way about me or had, uh, a, a negative energy in some form of fashion. Mm-hmm. And it, the word just goes around, fuck him. You hey. know what I mean? And then, you know, like, that's all it takes hey, is real. fuck him. That's real. And then, you know, uh, there there's the closed door. That bitch locked. You know what I mean? Um, I've had several scenarios where, you know, I've reached out and um, was like, yo, like, okay, obviously y'all like in cahoots with such and such or something and niggas is like no nah, we ain't fucking with you i mean i'll i mean i'll outright say for myself i've i've had circumstances where there's two major major detroit rappers 
in the game right now mm-hmm. that have told people to not come on my podcast and to not work with me. And they've closed out, I would say, about 14 artists from coming on here. And I would say about six of them were actually prominent artists. That's awful. So, and I've, and you know what's funny? I've had discussions with those individual artists to confirm it. And they're like, yeah, I'm not going to lie, bro. I was telling my people not to fuck with you. And I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, I'm sitting there going like, is this really happening? Like, you're literally yeah. in a room right now telling yeah. me face to face. I know for a fact I've had that shit happen. But yeah. like I said, um, I've been left playing that game alone, bro. I've... I got more, I've released more independently like with Rebel Nation than I ever did in any of my other work with the uh, previous label. Yeah. Like I've done more in the last six years with me and my partner Devin um, than I could have imagined. I got countless tapes, EPs, and singles out, almost like a Guinness World Record amount of shit. Beautiful. Like, um, and it's it's been back and forth between uh, street orientation shit and hip hop. Like my whole thing was to, I wanted to really like cause like I've been a legend. What do you say to a nigga that's been I've I've had the splendor and luxury of enjoying legendary status in my career in the streets the entire time I've been out here. Yeah, been a legend the whole time. I was like, yo, I want to go do something different. Like, I'm, what the fuck, I'm going to keep playing this game for. So that's why I started fucking around with uh, the hip-hop. And I had started, uh, I did it with the Drunken Master. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but the Drunken Master changed the temperature. And it raised eyebrows uh, from all of my peers in the hip-hop community, all of them. Like, Bill and Isaiah was just, like, me trying, you know, exploring some different shit. But I've been... Uh, raising eyebrows like so I dropped the drunken master but then I dropped the real money on some street shit right in behind that just to prove a point like I've been dropping tape after tape year after year like tapes for niggas and um, I'm also in the business of selling my dope I'm not in the business of running to put my shit on the streaming platform and get pimped for some change um uh, for for many years, we had a strategy of letting that streaming shit pay for itself. I never would touch that money. I just let it pay for my next release to come out. But I was obviously doing well enough to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've been selling my shit on Bandcamp lately. I got people who I drop a tape, a motherfucker might spend $50 with me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So um, i just been more in the... Um, into building my coat following and just into the hustle of it. I'm not trying to like get a record deal or no shit like that. I fully got a grip on my composition, composing and what I'm doing. Um, like I said, I've been co-producing, getting more into production. Um, I just really love this music shit. So sure. for me, it's just like, Building the building the brand in which we've been doing, which is Rebel Nation. Um, building the company. That's my artist over there. Well, our artist, Sage, you know what I'm saying? Um, got a whole different different twist that he putting down. And um shit, there it go. Bill and Isaiah, we coming back for that. But me and Valid have plans on like this this stretch money and valid shit is not about to stop. For sure. It's probably gonna last forever. Uh, last question I want to throw at you before we close out, man. Um, J. Cole was put on Complex Top Rapper Alive right now. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Oh, uh, man, that's great. You think J. Cole's uh, top? Like, do you think that they, that was the right call? That's an opinion. Facts, but it's Complex. <laughs> <laughs> complex is pretty big, man. They, I mean, they fucking, I mean, they got, yeah, man. They got some look, following. Dude. Look, if Cole got that rock right now, he it ain't like he ain't put in the work to deserve it. Right. Give it to him. Is it is it a bunch of other motherfuckers who be tripping? Likely yes. <laughs> like honestly, bro, I think like I feel like Drake is like I don't know. I feel like Drake is in that like like did y'all consider Drake before y'all gave it to Cole? Did they consider Drake? Cause <laughs> Drake retarded. Drake is like, I feel like that motherfucker's one of the best to to do it. Yeah. Like, 
And like, you know, I mean, bro, he raps incredibly well. And then he'll just go into like a singing and get the, and it's, he's just fucking incredible. Every market messes with him. Every type of demographic messes with him. He's unstoppable, bro. Yeah. I feel like he's like fucking the rap Michael Jackson. For real. Yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm just saying, man, I think we get so washed up and because we're always around Detroit and stuff like mm -hmm. that. If I call 10 of my rapper friends and tell them to name me five J. Cole songs, they won't be able to name one. But if I call them and tell them to name me five Drake songs, that's why yeah. I think we're kind of two. I'm one of them, bro. I can't <laughs> name you five Coles. Am I familiar? Do I know? Do I know that boy get busy? Do I stay hip? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like, you give it to Cole. What make you give it to Cole when we got when we got niggas like Conway with his mouth crooked still, and he tripping though, Conway go crazy. It's I, it's a matter of opinion. Like, let me ask you this, man. If when you look at the Detroit music scene and the direction it's going, mm -hmm. um, with all unbiased and with all, I know I know we're supposed to spread positivity. I know we're supposed to spread the fact that there's a lot of motion happening, but. The trajectory of it, based upon what it is now, do you think there's longevity in it, or do you think a change is going to have to be made eventually with the sound and the style and what's being put out there? No, nah, the, like, bro, this Detroit shit been like this, bro. This been like, like this sound. It's been like this since fucking Tax and, and and fucking the Cheddar Boys and the motherfucking. You remember how you you you've heard Oh Boy, right? So, oh Boy, no. I don't play no games. Oh mm. Boy. You ain't never heard I'm the sorry. East Side Cheddar Boys. I know oh boy. I met Malik, man. That's man, a... get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Malik. Hey, is... man, listen to me, man. <laughs> listen to me, man. Listen, this shit, this sound, this integrity that we've been holding up and keeping this shit been like this for years. Hell of a making T Grizzly first day out. He been making shit that sound like that. That's just the one that did what it did. And when I heard that shit, I said, man, that's the old formula, man. I remember that formula. I know that shit. Me and me and Helly were very close, man. I love that nigga. Everything I know from this studio shit and how I record and everything I do, I learned from Hell of a Bro. You're saying the first day outs format was already something that's been established? In a, in a sense of like, and I'm not even trying to like Easter egg or spill the beans on like my, like what, what I'm saying is like Hell of a been doing shit doing that sound and you th that frequency and doing that and making shit that dope like yeah. that's just the one that took off the way it did for yeah. for if you around back then and you go to hell of a studio back then he's going to put on a beat and the feeling is going to be the same mm. way back then yeah it was like that back then bro. listen bro he's been like a master dr dre uh force in that sound uh for many many years bro yeah. Yeah. like this shit is not just like it just happened like, no for sure he's he, yeah. when he came on the podcast we had like i think he's the longest conversation we've had on here which was like yeah. three hours plus and he said that he went to atlanta with the sound and then atlanta just kicked him out they're like it's not working over here and then he yeah. couldn't find where to put a song and a, a style and sound yeah it just yeah took forever. yeah 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 it, yeah it's that's crazy i remember that though i remember and then i remember i remember like rock on future fucking with him and then him landing the placement with jeezy and i just remember like hell yeah mm. like you know like he um i can talk about this like i was there like i was the one that was like yo like i was in the studio when lil zay said hell of a made this beat baby yeah. he was recording a, a song of his own that's his son yep feel me and i was like nigga that's your tag that need to go on everything so you told Hellova to put that yeah, tag on there? Yeah, that, that was year, year, years ago. Uh, yeah, you know, that ain't, like, who, who the fuck am I to walk around taking credit for, like, you know, like, saying that that's not some shit to just be saying, but, like, I ain't got no reason to lie, but, like, he didn't been in the interview and said it himself. That's you cool. You know what I mean? So it's out there like that. So it's not like I'm, you what know you what I mean? But, yeah, no, that, cool that really happened, man. You know? What do you think you're, um, as far as your entire career has been your most impactful moments for Detroit itself? Um, s seeing the promotion and marketing the way we did it was impactful to the city alone right mm -hmm. out the gate. Um, 
the the record take money to make money itself in which i had more we had other singles i had little boy and hit the block with it which told it like the streets still go crazy about those records um uh take money to make money was an entirely different approach than everything that was released before and um uh even after still uh I made a record that from a motherfucker, a baby from six years old to somebody 66 was able to dance and able to relate. And that shit was played in every backyard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was just uh, the, the connection to it and the familiar, mm -hmm. it was familiar. The sample is so familiar. It was a groove. Hell, he put that slap on there. Saida voice sounded good. Yeah. Um, you know, I had, you know, obviously I said the right shit at the right time. And um, I think the record itself, you know, because, like, we had records like DZ in my hood. Um, you know, in my hood used to go crazy and Chopper in the trunk and, you know, gangster shit. Like, you know, hardcore street shit. And, you know, we had, like, the Lodge Boys with uh, work, you feel me, and um, shit like that. So I had something that was just kind of, like, completely opposite and smooth. And Detroit is a smooth groove place, and nobody was able to dance the way they danced to my record <laughs> and bust out and hustle and do the hustle and all that. Like, even to this day, that shit still stands. Yeah. When if somebody want a motherfucking, it's it's like like for real, bro. If y'all want to hustle and dance and step in Detroit, you might. It's it's a chance that you gonna like put on Stevie Wonder <laughs> or Stretch Money, <laughs> like and is get the party started. So, yeah. uh, um, last uh, things to uh, if you know I, we kind of didn't get into the point of uh, Detroit and we the, ain't getting into a lot of shit. Man. What do you want to talk about, man? What's uh, on your What's man. on your mind, son? It's, uh, man, we ain't getting to a lot of shit. What do you want to talk about? Don't forget your question. Oh, I was going to say the trajectory of Detroit's music. We kind of cut off halfway into it, but um, where it's going, where it's heading, do you see that a transformation is to be made eventually, or do you think that the direction it's going in is sustainable? Because people are trying to cross over to the mainstream sound a little bit, and also Detroit is, a part, is partially creating mainstream sounds now. So it's changing. Everything's changing, really. If we have if we have the chance and opportunity and luxury to evolve and 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 like for for the rest of the country to be able to see all of what we have to offer sonically, that would be great. Um, right now, the homies in the streets got the rock. Um, and that sound is is it. That's that's the wave. Um, and this is a run. Uh, none of us can gauge how long this run about to last. It's about to last for a minute because it's new to everybody else. So um, it's not finna just come and go. We got the doors cracked wide open. So we it's finna be, Detroit is finna be a, a thing for the next seven to 10 years, wow. for sure, I like to say. So I could see the longevity in that. Um, and it's so much more potential in so many other areas and talent and like you know really see that's the thing this this thing may last even longer than that because it's not just the music and shit that's taken over by storm right now like we got comedians you know what i mean coming out of here like that's really i mean you know I, it's it's obvious like we got ha ha and such and such and like and really taking the world by storm right now so I think with all these different walks of life and, and 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 people in these different careers pulling off this incredible shit. I mean, you know, Will Smith calls ha ha hey hey. Will Smith. You mean the ha ha Davis? Ha ha Davis. Yeah, he put him in crazy ass movies and shit. Bad yeah, Boys Three and everything. I mean. That's fucking incredible. Yeah, Will Smith put him in some movies. Uh, Kevin Hart hooked him up, put him on stage with him, did a lot of stuff with him and Jackpot the Juice. 
Yeah, you uh, know, Jack like, Funny's emerging yeah, right now. Like Jack, Jack, Jack killing shit. Mm, <laughs> he Jack killing Funny's, shit. He funny as hell. The baby's hooking you up. You feel me? Like yeah, it's yeah, like he just tore it up in the baby shit. Yep. Like he got the movie out. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like that we ain't even like you got the music, you got that shit going on, but then we got this fucking movie craze that's happening right now. Yeah, but that shit that shit's not it's still happening. It is though. happening. And you know what? It's making people get, people are getting paid, which is a good thing. I do, I do, I do. I mean, I'm not going to talk about that. Never mind. But just everybody needs to be careful with these two. Anyways, we'll, we'll get, we'll get onto that. Some other conversation. When I have more security and bulletproof shit going on, we'll talk about that. How Let I feel me about ask you this, man. Yeah. Money isn't everything. Put it that way, bro. Like, no, it's not. It's not. I'd rather have another Friday be made from a Detroit style Friday than. I just really, I just like, my thing is I've never been into the, like the like B movies and like low budget shit like um, so that's never been my thing. Like I like motion pictures. That's what I'm saying. Like movie movie. So like. <laughs> That kind of just counts me out. And make, I'm happy for my friends that they're making money, and I've been in 2B movies, and I've regretted it. But I will say I'm happy people are getting paid. That's, that's all I can say. You guys are making your money. That's a good thing. And people I've been are watching. in 2B movies, and I regretted it. <laughs> it was bad. I was in a movie. I can't say the names of the people, but one of my boys, he tried to shake my hand after. The audience was clapping for us. He's the one who put me in the movie, and I said, "Bro, I, don't, I can't shake your hand for putting me in this bullshit, bro." And I just walked, <laughs> and I walked out the fucking theater after that. I was like, "Don't, don't call me for this." Oh, that's when I realized, God. like, all right, it's I get it, and I'm not gonna break it down because yeah. people can lose money from what I'm, what I would want to say about it. So I want people to keep yeah, making the money. Yeah, it's no, it's can't not do that. Yeah, yeah, it can't make people lose money. But I will say, yeah, movies killing it, music killing it, going mainstream. Um, you know, good things are happening, bro. I did want to bring up when I heard you say the word bias. Like, yeah. I feel like, ain't it funny, like, how, like, it's like we've grown to a point, like, we, we obviously, we both understand that, like, being biased is not cool or the way. And, like, we got all this going on in the city, and it's like, why has it, why is there like this sense of biasness with the street rap artists and hip hop artists? Why, why are like I and I don't even mean to ask why, like, I get it. The streets run this shit, the streets, so the streets is gonna always be the measure and stick a cool. But then it's like, why do like the the streets and the street guys have to carry this? Uh, you know, if y'all ain't doing this, y'all ain't cool. Or if like you not rapping on that sound or that beat and it ain't hitting like that, you ain't cool or. You, it ain't no respect for it or like like I know to this day like street niggas talk about hip hop and be like oh them old backpack niggas and it's like that's not really cool and you know I, f I, f I think that the, sh the mud gets slung on both sides I know it's hip hop niggas that be like fuck them street niggas and shit and I remember like like hip hop niggas and MCs feeling like, you know, like, you know, them niggas can't rap. So it was like, you know, they can't rap like we rap. We really rap good. Like, don't nobody, we don't give a fuck about that shit. Them niggas can't rap for real, that old, you know, whatever, you know. Like, so I've heard that. But then I just feel like, damn, man, like, I hate that stigma of feeling like, because this is the type of music I make or we make or over here on this side of shit, like, we lame or I'll, something. I'll tell you something. I noticed that the people that do stick to that side of hip-hop and really speak to, uh, stick to lyricism, as long as they're making tons of money, everybody will say that's sweet. But if you're not making money, people will be like, uh, we're yeah. not trying to hear that shit. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. thing I learned about Detroit, which yeah. is kind of an interesting thing, is that 
they respect success at a high, high level. Like Absolutely. they really, if you have a clothing brand and they could look mm. at it one day and be like, man, that ain't shit. But then you send, you send $5 million overseas, you start selling it everywhere. They're like, oh, that shit's fire. Like that's sweet. So yeah. it's what sells yeah. is what makes people respect what it is. Absolutely. I agree. Um, all the way on a small scale, I learned it just uh, trying to like stand outside and sell my CD. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, nobody would buy my shit from me if I looked like I needed the money. Mm -hmm. I needed to, like, pull up with my car a certain way, sounds <laughs> blasting, jumping out, fresh as hell, cologne on, jewelry on, kitted up, and, like, hey, check my shit out. Fuck with me. Like, or don't. Really kind of nonchalantly about it, but, like, when I was out there like, hey, check me out, you know what I'm saying, and willing to stand there and rap for a nigga if I had to, I couldn't get nobody to fuck with me. But then when I changed my appearance and how I looked and making sure I'm clean cut and on point, then a motherfucker want to talk to me after that. So when you say Detroit respects a high success rate, they don't, they don't respect you on the rise or on the come up. And I think that that's just the way that shit go. Like, don't nobody want to ride with you when you trying to bring the shit to life. As soon as they see the shit come to life, everybody want to come and they want to be at the shows. And, you know, it was funny. I was telling uh, not my partners that's with me, but I was telling random motherfuckers like, yo, I'm telling you about this Bill and Isaiah shit. Me and Valid, this shit going to be crazy. I'm inviting you to shit. Don't jump on the bandwagon when this shit take off. I'm telling you now. Nah, I've been trying to tell you. And it's like Bill and Isaiah really did what we said it was going to do. And it was like, yeah, make sure you around for all this shit. Don't just try to jump in. Because now we got motion. Well, you hear a lot of people talk about that. Nobody supports you on the come up normally. It's not even just Detroit, but yeah. Detroit, I think, is extra heavy with it. Like, you really, really feel it. Yeah. And then once they see success, any type of signs of success, then it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, everybody's sharing you, everybody's promoting yeah. you, bringing your, their girlfriends to the shows, all that <laughs> type of shit. So it is a it is a sucky thing. Um and I think the best way to go about it, obviously you've been through it already. You've been, I, I don't have to tell you, but if yeah. anybody ever listens to me, the one thing I can say is you got to keep going back to the drawing board till you figure out something that you are personally happy with, the fact yeah. that you're putting out that and the people are happy with it. One thing I'm noticing about you um, and the way that you're talking is that some part of you has outgrown what you grew up with from what the responses of the people that you grew up around and the demographic that you grew up around mm -hmm. And it's like you're trying to stay connected, you're trying to stay in touch, but you're already gone. Like, and you're trying your best to stay there, but you, you're gone already. Like, yep. you have elevated to a different level. When people hear you say you outgrown somebody, they always look at it disrespect. Like, oh, you outgrew rap, you outgrew hip hop, you outgrew yeah. Detroit, whatever. It's yeah. not that. It's just there's certain elements of it that yeah. my body and my mind doesn't resonate with no more. Damn, bro, you know that's that's deep. I appreciate hearing that from you mm. because uh, when when we talk frequency and we talk sonically. And where I eventually, I see myself, I'm likely, you know, at, at 57, I'll probably be doing blues. I love music. I'm probably not going to ever stop recording and fucking around with some music. But I'm going to also not feel like rapidly rapping neither at, at at higher levels in my age i want to fucking narrate planet life like morgan freeman <laughs> you know with my voice and shit and the gazelle i personally and, believe you are supposed to be multi-entertainment value like you're supposed yeah. to be in multiple sources of entertainment not just music yeah i just kind of figured that out in the last couple years yeah and i've been trying to figure out how to channel it like where to put it and like it ain't been that easy but I definitely see it. So for you to see that and acknowledge that, that's real. That's okay. real. Appreciate it. That's real. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything you want to touch on before we close out? Um, Stretch Money, Sage, Big City, Rebel Nation is the label. Um, follow us on Instagram. Um, follow me, Stretch Money Official. Uh. Follow me at Stretch McCullough on Facebook. When you follow me on Instagram, hit the link in my bio. Follow me on Bandcamp. 
it's imperative and mandatory that you follow me on Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> because I drop shit on Bandcamp that you may not get on the streaming, on the on the digital platform, and I still utilize the digital platforms. That's the name. That's part of the game right now. Mm. But I also drop exclusive music. Sage and I both, we drop exclusive music specifically for Bandcamp for our people to get, to have, and to purchase, and to keep. Bandcamp, you can download, purchase, and stream the music live from Bandcamp. So, yes, Stretch Money, Sage, Big City, we are the Lords. And I'm not going to stop saying that shit for all you, like, I got threatened by a gang-banging nigga the other day talking about, nigga, you, you better stop saying the Lords. I'm going to come tap your head. Nigga, we are the Lords. We the rebel Lords. I made that shit up, and we are the Lords because we live like Lords. I'm really a fucking Lord. People trying to hurt you for saying lords? Man, I get threatened all the time, man. A lot of people niggas, like, man, man. And you had a stretch of not just money, but people hating you, man. It's, it's like a long time of You just... know, but that's the thing, bro. That's what come along with motherfuckers like me. Like, you know, I'm look, I'm, look. I'm I'm one of them. I'm a Tupac, a Charleston White. I'm an outspoken solo ride nigga. And when I say shit, I hurt motherfuckers' feelings and it put panties in the bunch, but I be saying real shit. And motherfuckers really just don't be prepared for my temperature. And I piss a lot of motherfuckers off, but really, you know, what that mean? I really just burnt your motherfucking biscuits. What I said was real. So um, right now I'm, I'm, I'm in good health and unscathed. That shit ain't warranted. Niggas talk all that shit on the internet all they want to, but ain't nobody gonna do shit to me because... For real, what right and what energy you got to do some shit to me with all them bullshit and threats for real, you know? So, like, we figured out the internet is fake and played out. <laughs> and it's wrestling. You know, it's who could do the most in the ring. Sometimes, and, man. Sometimes, you know, you, know, you pull it up. Could, it could translate over into but some like, bullshit. Like some of those stupid ass I got foot. shame for door dashing. You were a door dasher? Yeah, from time to time, yes. Yes, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, why not? I do every hustle I can. Look at this. <laughs> that's from door dashing? No, this from something else. Oh. But that's the point. You shouldn't be shaming nobody for what they do to get no motherfucking money and take care of their home or however they motherfucking do it. It ain't no such. I know motherfuckers who door dashing right now who make four, five hundred a day. They stay out there all day long and they take care of their motherfucking household. Does anybody but, you recognize know, we, you? Um, I've had it happen a couple times and um, I've had it happen in a negative fashion as well. Uh, you know, like, like I said, motherfucker tried to shame me about it. So, damn, you know, but, you know, we also live in a place where, like, you know, you go to L.A. and everybody, not everybody, but people catch the bus. You go to New York, people catch the bus. Get your ass seen catching the bus out, out on motherfucker eight mile in Detroit. <laughs> it's slow. <laughs> Career over. <laughs> Fuck is you saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a fucked up dynamic and mentality and circumstances to live under. But that's why I ain't got no problem cussing the motherfucker out, man. Well, I think it is with, the, with with jobs is that when you're a rapper and you tell people you have a job and any type of job that it is, they're almost like, oh, so you're not making money off your music? <laughs> also, so you're not really a drug dealer that you said you were in the song? Oh, so all, yeah. that, all that money you're talking yeah. about in your music is bullshit? Like, so that's yeah. why people don't like hearing about it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, you just... You you just we live in a place where you get shamed yeah you just get shamed for shit and that's just the way it is and you know my daddy told me when i was little you gotta look like money even when you ain't got money to keep a motherfucker with money wanting to fuck with you it's crazy it sucks that we have to live that way sometimes but i don't i don't do that anymore now i'm at the point where i don't give a fuck what anybody thinks or says for real yeah, you know, you have to, you know, you have to get a couple grays, get some salt and pepper in you. Yeah, I did. And yeah. then, yeah, yo, your shit's silky too. Mine's crazy, son. <laughs> this kid's shit's getting crazy. I was about to diet, then my girlfriend's like, nah, what are you talking about? I like it. I mean, I said, fuck it. You it's, know, yeah. do you feel like it's too early to so start dying it? I mean, is it too early to have it? Oh, yeah, I'm, that was, this is all stress for sure. I, in the last two years, all my shit came from stress. Stressful, for, for sure. sure. I like, know. I, the day I remember starting to feel stressed, I was like, my hair is gray. This is, <laughs> it. 
<laughs> this isn't genetic shit. Everybody's like, it's genetics. It's passed down. I was like, no, this is like yeah. fucking. I'm pissed about something. Yeah. I gotta work on it. You know. Yeah, stress. The stress cooked me, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm turning in like my shit doing the Doctor Strange, just going gray from the bottom up. So I'm gonna be one of the motherfuckers with the gray <laughs> taper right there on the side of well, my look, shit. Look, I just seen LeBron James. A quarter of his beard is gray now. So. There I mean, he's 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 rocking it. We can rock it too. But Str- um, yeah. Most importantly, man, I just wanted to bring mm-hmm. awareness to me, mm-hmm. um, stretch money in the Rebel Nation and what we got going on. Um, For sure. And we have motion. Um, be sure to go to rebelnation.com, the website, and check us out and see what we got going on because it's all there. I have a lot of people, man. They I see people in the streets all the time. L, they what up? You ain't rapping no more. And it's like, yo, that's crazy. Like, like I've I've, I've got count. I've really I've dropped countless releases, dog. So it's like seeing people in the streets. It's hard to like be like, yo, what what rock you living under? Because you know, but people, it's obviously people in the streets that's not on social media, and it's people on social media that ain't in the streets, and they know, and they don't know, and you know what I mean? So, like I said, man, most importantly, um, I just wanted to bring some good energy, good grace, pop it with you. You know what I mean? Of course, man, I'm glad, um, you know. Shine some light on me and the Lords, man. Uh, Rebel Nation is the label. For sure. I appreciate I appreciate you being here, man. I know it was a long time coming. We were trying yeah, to make this happen yeah, yeah. for a long time. And look, man, I'm sorry for, like, the energy before doing this. Like, because I was like, I ain't fucking coming on Kid L couch. Fuck Why? Him. Why? You know? And I, I, I think, uh, I don't know if we had some words or something and some messages or something and you rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not sure. No, you know what happened? I remember what happened. Basically, somebody on my somebody came on my podcast and said something about you. I think yeah. it was like Shy Killer or something like that. Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. There we go. There we go. What? And and I I I know I can honestly say even without even knowing clearly uh I probably just my energy didn't accept that shit the right way and you just doing your fucking job. Yeah, I think Shy yeah. came on here and said something and then he dropped like a diss track on you. Something crazy happened. Yeah. And then uh yeah. I somebody had said something about it and then I commented and then we, we were in the comments when we first yeah, said it's like what? Yeah, yeah, and I was supposed to like motherfucker. What? And I was and like yeah. <laughs> in my mind I was like, man, I'm pretty sure Stretch Money wants to kill me. That's all like that's the energy yeah, that I got. Yeah, and I'm like <laughs> and, and you know, I remember I remember feeling like that and I remember saying I ain't never sitting on that motherfucker's couch. Yeah. With him with his legs crossed and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you were right though. Like, you yeah, were right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you feel, feel me? That's so, not fully crossed. Yeah, my shit is crossed right now. Yeah. You know, your shit, you be you be up top with it though. You yeah, ain't you going out like that. You Indian on the couch. You hear me? Um, so I mean, yeah, we did. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect when I met you. I did think it was gonna be more angst, but I'm I'm happy to see that you were uh, chilling and positive, and I was chilling and positive. Absolutely. Um, I think it's important for people to see that, like, uh, in person, everything changes. Like, whatever is on the internet, we don't know what somebody's communicating through the internet ever. Yeah. You know? Except when yeah. people, you know, yeah. are very direct about it. But appreciate you being on this, man. Like I said, we've had a 350 plus guests on this couch, and your name always gets brought up when they talk about wow. Detroit history and the people who really yeah. had landmark songs. Um, so I don't think you should ever look back and be like, oh, people forgot. But I, your name is still very, very much oh, remembered. Oh, no, I'm living it every day, yeah. man. Like, yeah. I'm living it every day. Like, I'm literally, I'll be in the streets and I get cheered like Rocky. Like, the hugs and embraces. Like, I get mm-hmm. guys that slap me hard as hell. Man, keep doing, keep going hard. So, and, man, they, this shit be crazy for me out there. So Yeah, man. Like, um, I'm really living that experience. So I never feel forgotten. Um, um, I'm at peace with um, everything that happened. And um, even with my decline and my trying to get back and having a resurgence, and I'm at peace with all of that. Like I said, I'm, I'm fighting a different fight. I'm in it. I, I have a different cause that I'm in it for. So I like being like uh, bitter or I'm not an old bitter rapper. Like I've been called that. I'm not no old bitter nigga. I'm just a nigga who feel how he feel and I say it. You know what I mean? And like we got to stop. We got to stop like doing that to people like 
judging people for speaking their mind and like and shaming people and like shit like that like for them standing on something like we live in the time now like with this social media shit like you know motherfucker see you you standing on something and you ain't folding like you get looked at as like extra or you hating or you bitter or you jealous oh you mad like you ever you ever you ever have a valid reason to be mad and a motherfucker be like oh you mad mad yeah man i'll beat your ass <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean so i just feel like i feel like that's a fucked up awful stigma that we all have to live under when it come to the social media shit and we got to stop doing that too right yeah it's a huge conversation that the ogs yeah. right um are supposed to be helping the older i mean the newer generation and then the newer generation saying fuck you to the younger generation and the younger generation uh, the older generation saying like fuck you guys and it looks like they're bitter it looks like the ogs are basically saying like yo we, we deserve a piece of what's going on or we want to work with you guys or whatever circumstance or, or whatever link they could come to and, and the older younger guys are like we don't you guys didn't help us plus we're doing it good on our own so go fuck yourself i ain't got nothing but some gang for my for my niggas that's uh my niggas that's younger than me mm. and the generations under than me i ain't got nothing but some gang for them dog for sure i i i, I wish that i could share some of this shit and give it to some of these niggas and like i be you know i i watch the way niggas be moving these niggas be like you know they be doing some real unsafe shit like i was groomed a certain way and raised a certain way in the way we moved and like you know we be watching you know i mean it's evident when we when we watching our rappers die and get shot and killed and in and out of prison obviously you got some reckless moving and I've been able to move out here for a long time with some of the shit that I learned yeah. <laughs> out here, you know what I mean? And I'll be like, damn, you know, the young niggas ain't got no, they don't have no form of an elder around them to be like, hey, pull your coattail. Hey, man, look, don't do that like that. Do it like this, you know? Right. You know, or just, just with the music. Like, I got so much game to give on the music side of shit. Like, I look forward to making the fuck out of an artist one day. Like, I can't wait to, like, make me a Lady Gaga. Yeah. And tear this bitch up. It's good around the corner since we're around Detroit and everybody's popping, man. Yeah, man. Ain't no mystery. But Stretch I money. I appreciate you, dog. I appreciate you, man. Stretch money was in the building, man. Uh, Everybody go so, uh, follow his band camp. Make sure to go pop that off, man. Appreciate yeah. you being a part of this. Stretch money. Go look for me. Fuck all the bullshit. You, you ain't been checking for me. <laughs> you go on YouTube and you go to take money to make money. Shout. It's a shit ton of shit on there. Rep Fuck with me. Eastside Lord out now. Rebel Nation. We're at Parallel Sound Studio. Hello Visual. Shooting these productions. We're out. Peace. Fire, man. Fire ass up.